Our Father and our God, for the time allotted, we pray that you would speak through my lips, think through my mind, let there be none of me, all of you. We pray for articulation of speech, clarity. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would carry the anointing to each seat, to each individual, that you would open their heart to receive the word of the Lord. The word will do, it, do the work, for it is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Even scriptures declared you sent a word into Jacob and it lit upon Israel. Whatever is dormant in us, the next best version of ourselves will be ignited through the catalyst of the word of God. Jesus said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Bring to life dead things. Quicken what is lying dormant for this season, this time for this generation. We are the solution to world problems. And let us see ourselves accordingly. And in advance, we give you honor and glory for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Take out your notepads, your Bibles, and I'm gonna speak as quick as I can, and then remind me at the end to make an announcement. But I wanna jump right into the Word of God. First Kings 19, eight to 16, talking about mentals. This is an area of um, expertise for me. I have an understanding of the difference between the anointing and mentals. And I wanna give you as much revelation as I possibly can when you talk about mentals, they have to be actually acknowledged and exercised. You don't have a mental and not exercise it. There's a lot of people that are unaware that they do have mentals. And what we want to do is to show you through scriptures that every believer has a mental. And even in the story of Elijah and Elisha, he asked for a double portion or let me do greater than what you did. And Jesus said that you're gonna do the greater work. And so mentals are falling. There's no mental that has ever been taken to heaven. Heaven doesn't need mentals. Because every mental that ever existed is still here in the earth realm. In the book of 1 Kings 19, 8 to 16, the Bible said, and Elijah took his mental and he wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that the two went over on dry ground. It came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said to Elisha, ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing, not an impossible, but it's hard. Nevertheless, if you see me, write the word down, perception, perspective. Perception, perspective. If you see who I really am, if you see me, not based on a title. When I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if you get distracted, if you have broken focus, it shall not be so. In other words, how bad do you want it? Verse number 11, and it came to pass as they were went and talked that behold their appearance, a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by the whirlwind in heaven. There's a lot going on in this text. Elijah saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariots of Israel, the horsemen thereof. He saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes 
and rent them into two pieces. A lot of us don't want to get rid of old stuff that belonged to an old season. We just want to keep adding and adding. But in order for you to receive mentals, it means that you've got to divest yourself of an old garment in order to wear the, the new. He took up also the mentor of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, smote the waters and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? In other words, I recognize that it's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by the spirit of the Lord. Where is this God that gave him this mantle? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. Whenever there's a transference of a mantle, the first thing that you're going to see is imitation before maturity. And so we talk about, oh, he just wants to be like so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. So -and -so. Not necessarily. People are trying to figure out what to do next. So even Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So you don't have skill without experience. And a lot of us want to go to the next, but we don't have experience, that's no skill. See a man skillful, he's going to stand before kings. If you want to shift the realm that you're in, you've got to move from revelation to something that is experiential. Write the word down, experiential. The Bible said, and they came to meet him, the spirit of Elijah does rest on Elisha. Excuse me, I'm jumping ahead of myself. And when he had also smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither. And Elijah went. And when the sons of the prophets, which were in view at Jericho, saw him, they said, the spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him, bowed themselves to the ground before him. And it's interesting because this is the power of influence. Now, influence has a dominant anointing, an anointing that makes influence subordinate to it. And this is called the power of persuasion. Write it down. This is where you see Esther. Esther just didn't have favor. There was a mental that was operating, and it was a mental that gave her persuasion. Write that down. Because you are going to have the same thing when you walk out of here. This, this persuasion has four different components to it. And we're going to tease this out in a minute. Verse number 16, and they said, Behold now, there be with thy servant fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master, lest preadventure the Spirit of the Lord has taken him, or the Ruach of God had, had taken him. So we're living in a time now of the new normal. The Bible says that long before we had the pandemic, that God was going to do something new. When God moves in the new, it means that we don't have the skill and the ability that we have to now position ourselves like the disciples to become learners of the new. Many people go out of an old season and they drag their old strategy with them so that the new looks like the old and they begin to second guess God. Whenever God transitions you into something new, there is always that transitional period where you're neither here nor there. It's a prophetic limbo that you are in. And it's in that place where you have to choose whether you go back to the old or you trust God in the new. There are two dimensions of reality. The prophetic realm and the experiential realm. The prophetic realm actually gives credence to something that exists but has not yet been experienced by the five physical senses 
in the dimension that we call time. God will have to pull back the veil that divides time from eternity, the natural from the supernatural, in order for a person to have a revelation of what is, but has not yet manifested in the dimension of time. Time is a dimension that gives human beings the right to experience planet Earth. If there is no such thing as time, there can be no such thing as a place. In order for you to meet someone at a cafe, there has to be a place and there's got to be a time. If you take time away, the place has no relevance. You have relevance and significance because you're in a specific zip code. You live in a zip, zip code. You work in a zip code. You worship in a zip code. But you worship during a specific time. The sons of Issachar was able to give credence that God was going to do something specifically for the children of Israel because they understood the times, they understood seasons to know what Israel ought to do within a specific zip code during a specific time. So let me give you Three examples. Joshua 6.26, so that you can really understand this. Joshua, the walls of Jericho, has just fallen down. And Joshua, with his foot on the ground, one foot on the ground and the other foot on a stone, he makes this declaration, shifting the frequency of that particular zip code. It shifted based on words. And he said, Cursed be the man before the Lord that raises up and buildeth this city Jericho. He shall lay it in the foundation thereof in his firstborn and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates. One hundred years pass. Two hundred years pass. 300 years pass, 310, 320, 330, 340, 350, 360, 370, 380, 390. At the 400 mark, a king rises up and has this idea. And he said, I think I'm just going to rebuild the walls of Jericho not knowing and not picking up with his five physical senses that there is a prophetic reality that is about to change the destiny of his firstborn and his lastborn, his baby son and his oldest son. And he has this idea. And with the idea, he starts building and his firstborn dies. Coincidence? And then he starts building again, and his lastborn dies. Coincidence? Just because your five physical senses has not been able to pick up what God is doing on your behalf does not mean he's not working. You are not aware of it with your five physical senses. First Peter 1, 18 to 20. I'll give you another scripture. The Bible said, for as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by the traditions of your fathers. In other words, there is this cultural algorithm that is working, that many of us are not aware of it, and it's controlling our focus. We live in an attention 
driven economy. In other words, whoever controls your attention controls their wealth and your destiny. Turn to your name and say, pay attention. Just pay attention. If you go to bed at night and you are sleeping with your cell phone, you are being controlled by cultural algorithms that is creating misalignment with the will and the plan and the purposes of God. That includes your success and your prosperity. You are being misaligned, not because of government, but there's a force that is working just beyond your conscious mind that you are not aware of it. So when you say that you're being led by the Spirit, it's a lie. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok is controlling your focus. Mantles are falling and you can't see it because your focus have been broken. Hit your neighbor. Say, she's talking about you. She ain't talking about me. She's talking about you. You better say amen. You better say I receive it. Verse number 19 says, but with the precious blood, we've been redeemed with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. In other words, he was slain before the foundation of the world because as soon as God had an intention, it was done in the realm of the spirit, but it just needed to wait for time on earth. Let me keep building this. That means intentions are so powerful that it will cause a person to become unstoppable. Which of you intending to build? Which of you intending to go to battle? It's a law. As long as you intend to do something in the realm of the spirit, it is already done. Abraham, take your only son up to the mountain and I want you to sacrifice him. And when he gets to the mountain, did he have to sacrifice? No, why? It was already done in the realm of the spirit. <laughs> Elijah, I want to give you this mantle. Do you intend to receive it? Because your action is going to testify. Genesis 11 and 6. Genesis 11 and 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they began to do. Now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined or intended to do. Therefore, write this down. Intentions require the cooperation of imagination, which is the faculty of the mind that operates as the eyes of the spirit. Elijah said, if you can see, it was a test of spiritual acuity. Write that word down, 
write it any way you want, spell it any way you want. <laughs> if you see me when I leave, you will have your desire. It's all about perspective. It's not just about pursuit. It's not just about passion. It's about perception or perspective. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 15 to 19 says, Wherefore also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, watch this, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, stay woke, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the riches of his glory of the inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to all, towards us with. Right in, in quotation mark, right in quotes or parentheses, there are 56 dimensions of power that God wants you to operate on. And I'm going to float that as a balloon. Behold, I give you power. And a lot of us are operating on one dimension or two dimension or three dimension because that's all the revelation that, that you have. But if you know that there are pretty close to 60 dimensions of power and each one of us have, have been given access how would you show up in this world when you woke up tomorrow morning if you knew how powerful you were you would show up differently you would not ask for permission to do anything you would have the power. You would have the authority. You would show up differently. You would embody the energy of someone that was powerful. I decree and declare to about tomorrow, starting from tomorrow, you are going to show up differently. You, you are going to show up powerfully. People that resisted you before are not going to be able to resist you in the days to come because you have power. One of the powers that God gives you is the power of perspective. The Bible said in the book of Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 to 18 he summons uh, 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 Abraham and he said after Abraham had uh, separated from Lot he said, I want you to lift up your eyes. I want to give you a new perspective. I want you to lift up your eyes. And I want you to look from the place where you are. A lot of people's lives are not changing, not because God doesn't want it to change. It's just that they cannot see beyond the limitations of their, their, their reality. But I decree and declare that God is going to give you a change of perspective. You're going to be able to look beyond where you are and you're going to see yourself in a different place. God is about to anoint your spiritual eyes. Your eyes have not, your spiritual eyes and your spiritual muscles are flabby because you haven't used them before. But God is going to give you an eye-opening experience. You're going to begin to see differently. You're going to see yourself differently. It Everything is about imposter syndrome, but I decree and declare you are not going to suffer from imposter syndrome anymore. There are so many believers that are suffering from another kind of syndrome. It's called near success syndrome. You get close to success and then something happens. But tonight God is delivering each one of you from near success syndrome. You are going to be successful. You are not going to be like the children of Israel. They were right at the promised land, but then their perspective 
descriptive about who they were. They say we are like grasshoppers and they never went over. They had the mantle because God said that you are going to be a kingdom of priests. They had a kingly anointing. They had a priestly anointing. In other words, a king, hallelujah, just takes authority over a realm or region. And if they don't have authority, they fight a warfare to gain land. I decree and declare that there was some land that was stolen from your parents and your grandparents. You are going to get it back because the mantle of a king is upon you. A king doesn't act for anything. A king legislates everything. I decree that with this king, the anointing, your speech is about to change. Everything that comes out of your mouth is going to be a decree. I decree and declare that your decrees are going to be fully embraced. God is raising you up with a new mantle. It's a mantle of authority. It's not only a mental of authority where you take control over regions and authority over realms, but it is a mantle of a priest. A priest uses the mouth just like a king uses his mouth. I decree and declare the only work you're going to do in this season is you're going to work your words, but you are not going to work by the sweat of your brow. I decree that God is taking the struggle out of your struggle. I decree that now you are walking differently because you know who you are. God separated Lot. Who is God trying to separate you from? Who is blocking your vision? I decree and declare every vision blocker is being moved out of your life. Every individual that is assigned to distract you and discourage you, their assignment is up. God has a mentor for you and things are about to change. God said to Abraham after his vision blocker was moved from his, uh, from his life, he said, I want you to lift up your eyes and I want you to look from the place where you are. I want you to have a 360 degree, hallelujah, vision of what I'm about to do for you. I want you to look northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to state the obvious. You can only see with your eyes. You cannot see with my eyes. I decree and declare this is the last season you're going to be people pleasing I decree I don't care how they see your life unfolding all I care about is whether you see it or not I decree today you are going to have a change of perspective God is anointing your eyes with eyes sub. I decree every single day of your life things are going to change I want to ask you a question sit down for a moment if I gave you a million dollars how would you feel and what would you do with it? If I gave you a million dollars right now, what would you do if I handed you a million dollars? What would your mind be like? What would your emotions be like? What would your perception be like? How would you show up in this world? And if I raised it to about a billion dollars, how would you feel? What if I had the power to give you control over all the money in the world right now? How would you feel? What would you sound like? What would you buy? What would you do physically? How would you sit? How would you walk? Who would you call? Who would you hang out with? Where would you live? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to ask you, what would you do with all the money in the world? Who would you do it with? What would change in your life? Now let me ask you a bigger question. If you had the choice to become uber rich right now today but there was one caveat and the caveat is that you could not wake up tomorrow would you take to waking up tomorrow or would you take the money and I want an answer from you would you take all the money in the world or would you choose waking up tomorrow that means you now 
have found the secret to success. The secret to success is hidden in what you value. You just told me that you value waking up in the morning more than a trillion dollars. That means that if time is more valuable than money, why is it that you waste your time? Why is it that you allow people to waste your time? The most valuable thing that you have, you do nothing with your time. You sit home, you decree and declare, but you never put feet to your dreams. You are waiting for someone to do it, but God has given you a mantle by which all things for you become it becomes possible. It's all about perspective. The Bible says that as soon as Lot separated from Abraham, God began to show him, hallelujah, the things that he could acquire. I decree and declare that the spirit of settling is over. God has made you a pioneer. You are not going to wait for someone to pioneer your destiny. I decree the anointing and the mantle of Noah is upon you. I decree that you are charting your own course. The waves of change that is destroying so many people's faith. I decree and declare you are not just riding the waves. You are creating the waves that other people are riding. I decree that things are changing for you. I decree that you would begin to perceive how powerful you really are. That the seed of greatness is not just uh, sitting in. Someone like Elon Musk uh, is not just sitting in. Someone like, um, I don't know, uh, whoever it is that is a multi-millionaire, Bill Gates. Uh, I decree and declare uh, that you've got the same seed of greatness on the inside of you. The Bible said that now unto him who is able to do the exceeding abundantly, above all you can ask, ask or think it's according to the power that works in you I decree to every individual that has a ministry you are not going to settle with where your ministry is today you're going to wake up every day with the gift of time and you are going to convert time like you convert money to buy things you want I decree and declare every time waster is driven out of your life by the mantle you are about to receive and only vision helpers are coming I decree and declare those that frustrate you I dismiss them in the realm of the spirit listen to me all of a sudden people are going to leave you I don't want you to cry about it I want you to give them a going away party because they're making room for the right people to come into your life life and decree and declare new mantles are falling mantles that are going to give you the ability to strategize your way to success I decree that you are coming into a season of innovative ideas that you are going to begin to work in your genius zone I decree that you have the mind of Christ let this mind be in you which is also in Christ Christ Jesus, I decree that you're raising the bar of your expectation, that God is giving you a, a change of perspective. The Bible said that God, hallelujah, spoke to Abraham and said, I want to give you a strategy that wherever your feet, hallelujah, is placed upon, I'm going to give you that land. He didn't physically walk. He walked in his mind. I decree and declare the anointing that is in this place and the apostolic and prophetic mentors that have been summoned here. I decree that you are coming on for life support. Your dreams are coming on for life support. Your vision is coming on for life support. I decree and declare you are getting the pep back in your staff. You are going to go home in the quietness of your sanctuary and you're going to allow God to download his thoughts into your mind. I decree
decree no more distraction. I decree your bedroom is now a dream room. I decree you are going to dream again. You are going to hear God at another level because you are about to have an eye-opening experience. The Bible indicates to me that there were so many people in the Bible that just through a change of perspective, God was able to work miracles in their lives. As long as Sarah saw herself as a barren woman, she remained non-productive until God delivered her from the blindness of disappointment. I decree and declare you came in here disappointed with people, but God is delivering you from the blindness of disappointment. You are going to see how you are going to make ends meet. Esther, God gave her a change of perspective. All she saw herself as someone that won Miss Congeniality Contest. She did not see herself as a deliverer until her uncle challenged her by the fact that unless she rose up as the deliverer who me as you I decree and declare you will no longer second guess who you are you are not going to ask permission you are going to rise up and you're going to become everything that God wants you to become I can think of Hagar sitting in the wilderness unable to see the provisions that God had given her. She was blinded by rejection. And she said, all I want to do is die. But God opened her eyes to show her the provision that God had made and provided in the wilderness. I'm calling you from out of the wilderness provision is made for you you may not see it but if you just open your eyes you would see that the problem you are fighting and Goliath you fear is the very thing that you need in order to exercise the gifts that are lying dormant in you you have the ability to break out of your own financial your burdens you are not waiting for a better job you are not waiting for promotion God has given you power to create wealth I release a mantle upon you I release a wealth creating mantle last year I asked God God I want to double my income God gave me an idea and within 10 days from me getting the idea and me exercising the idea I created a product took the product to market six months later I made over a million dollars it did not exist in the natural world it existed in the prophetic dimension of reality call ideas I decree and declare that you are exercising the faculty of innovation you are an ideas generating wealth creating machine I release the mental I decree and declare as you are walking ideas are coming to you ideas are flowing I decree you will not second guess your ability to bring it to pass I decree you have an idea book you are writing it down and God is giving you a strategy what is a strategy a strategy is a written plan to get from point A to point B without consideration of lack or limitation I'm going to say it again a strategy is a written plan to get you from point A to point B without consideration of lack or limitation I decree and declare this is the last day you are going to restrict God with God 
all things are possible. He does not consider your lack. He does not consider your limitation. Neither should you. I decree that you are now moving into a realm of possibilities. God is taking you from impossible to possible. Shall I receive it? I wish I could stay here, but my time is up. Sit down for one minute. It's all about perspective. If you can see me, what are you looking at? In what direction are you looking? If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above and not beneath. Rahab, standing on Jericho wall, in a place that was beneath her. This is beneath you. Living like you live, it's beneath driving what you drive it's beneath you being treated like you're treated it's beneath you it's about perspective my last few minutes let me load you up if you can see if you can see if you can see, we see seven different ways. One, natural sight. If you can see. Two, understanding and insight. You see what I'm talking about? That's understanding. Three, prophetic revelation. This is words of wisdom, words of knowledge prophetic utterances the young lady that was singing she was singing prophetic utterances God is going to take you around the world with your gift and you are going to prophesy accurate words to nations you will not be restricted any longer you will not second guess it is true and I'm only confirming what you know the doors to nations are going to be open. Do not be seduced like many of the other young prophets are being seduced. Keep your prophetic gift pure and you will speak to nations and heads of states. That is the word of the Lord and is as sure as my name is Cindy Trim. Number four, you see through perspective. Number five, innovative ideas. Stephen Jobs, he sold what was a mainframe, a frame of a computer, to raise the money to make the computer, and they bought into it. They bought something that didn't exist. It was his idea. That's all it was. I decree and declare you are so powerful in this season that you're going to sell people on your ideas and they're going to bankroll it. Oh, that's so weak. That's so weak. Number six, you see through vision. Habakkuk, praying, interceding. And he's saying to God, don't you see what's going on? Stop them, kill them. And God was like, bruh, it's too late. You should have prayed divine intervention before it manifested in time. It's too late. But what I want you to do, I want you to go up to the mount, uh, up to the tower, and I'm going to download a vision and write the vision and make it plain. Not a vision. The one I give you. Not a duplication of someone else's. Write it. Anything that is written is illegal in the earth realm. 
Satan wrestling over who had authority and power in the earth realm said, it is written, Jesus said, hold on one minute, bruh. It is written as well. In other words, this is legal. I decree and declare a revolution of Bible reading. I decree you will take that contract and covenant and speak it over your life. Speak it over your children. It is written. Legislate it. Take your dreams, take your visions, and write it and make it a legal document and tell the devil it's too late. It is written. And finally, dreams. Abraham, what do you see unfolding? Can you see? What is not clear to you will never be there for you. And what you cannot see coming never comes. What you believe, not what I believe, what I see for your life, what you see for your life. Dr. Trim, how do you know what I see for my life? I can see by the manifestation. You don't think too highly of you. You don't want too much for you. When you go into your house and that couch that you hate, you are the one that wants that couch there. Why? Because if you didn't want it, it wouldn't be there. So when you go home, you, the re you reserve the right to want something different. I want to live better. I want to drive better. I want to feel better. What you see determines what you see. And what you picture is what you capture. Your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. Bringing this in now. The veil of time was stretched back for Elijah to peer in the realm of the prophetic. Prophetic gives credence to what is about to happen in time. And he saw with his own eyes Elijah being taken up into this realm and he saw that his mental gave him authority in the atmospheric kingdom and on the earth and over the animal kingdom and over water. He saw the extent of his mental. And then he saw the mental falling. And he got ready. He ripped off his clothes. And he said, This mental is tailor made for me. Mentals are falling. Mental is not an anointing. An anointing is to unction to function, but a mental is worn over the carnal nature of an individual so that the only thing that is exposed is the purity, the authority, and the credibility of the one being called into an office. It is not only the anointing that he has access to, but that person that wears that mantle has access to every prophetic resource, every apostolic resource, every economic resource, every kind of resource that is made available, listen to this, in every dimension in which he has jurisdiction and levels of influence. I know that's a mouthpiece. 
but a mentor includes the anointing. It is not the anointing, but includes the anointing so that when a person shows up, God gives him the power of persuasion. Mentals in the Bible covered J.L. <clears throat> when the king, he met, she, he met Caesarea. The Bible said she ran out and covered him with a mantle. And it was prophetic demonstration that although she was a domestic engineer, a.k.a. a housewife, <laughs> her mantle was so powerful that when the military went to war without her, they couldn't destroy the general. And here's this little woman. Her claim to fame was to tighten the tent pegs and to milk the goats and to keep clean the dirt from out of the house and to have her husband's baby. That was her claim to fame until the challenge walked through her door. She said, I got something for you. I may look like a nobody, but I'm getting ready to exercise my mantle. You see, a mantle people can see, but they can feel. They just feel like there's something different about you, but they couldn't put their finger on it. A mental attracts, but it also repels. So that when an energy that is contrary to your mental shows up in your sphere, it's irritated by it. You wonder why people are irritated by you? It's not you, it's the mental. In other words, you can operate in this sphere. Why? Because I have jurisdiction in this air area. When they said to Paul, Paul, you shouldn't be over here. You don't have jurisdiction over here. This is our territory. Paul said, bruh. He said, put some respect on my name. Put some respect on my name. Put some respect on my name. I got jurisdiction because of my mental. Are you getting this? Say what you want, but I got the power. Let me wrap it up. I wish I could just stay here. We talk about a lot of things. God said to Joshua, Joshua, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I gave you a prophetic mental. And with this mental, you're going to have authority over kingdoms and nations to pull down, to throw down, to plant, to build. And this is what he said. I don't have any education. I've never been to the school of the prophets. I don't have a mentor. I don't have anyone that acknowledged I don't have anyone that recognized me. And this is what God said, no problem. I'm gonna mentor you. Let's see how you can prophesy. What do you see? <laughs> what do you, what do you, what do you? Can you perceive yourself as powerful 
That's why you're so different. That's why you don't tolerate. This is what drew you here. You didn't come just because you wanted to. The Holy Spirit drew you here to activate your mental. Well, how do I know what mentor I have? Well, who is it that you admire? Elisha said, I admire Elijah. That's usually an indication of the mental you are carrying. The mental is not just there for the pulpit. Is there for the pew. What are you waiting for? And if God can raise you up, and if you can see yourself as next in line, and if you have the courage and the audacity not to ask for permission, because when people don't know who they are, how are they going to help you to figure out who you are? They're going to fight you. You're talking about glass ceilings? We live in glass cages. And if you ever break out, all of culture is going to be like Pharaoh's army coming back to repossess you because they see the value of what you are carrying, but you don't see it. Why do you think you've been fought since you were a little boy and a little girl? Why do you think they're fighting you now? Why do you think they're closing doors on you? They're intimidated by you, but they don't want you to know that they're insecure. So they want you to tone down because they're toned down. Turn down for what? And if they're intimidated with you and you haven't even exercised your mental, imagine what's about to happen when you go back home, when you embody the energy of your anointing, when you embody it, when you embody the calling that is on your life, and when you wake up in the morning and you take charge of your day, Imagine what's about to happen with your family, your community, and in the industry. Government is praying and you're the answer. Because you have the solution to world problems. You are not a part of the problem. You are part of the solution. In conclusion, I see this place. as a delivery room and you're getting ready to be delivered not from demons and devils I'm not talking about that you've had enough demons and devils cast out of you there are two levels of deliverance one when a stronghold or evil force is cast out of you and you gain control over your thoughts and your minds and emotions but the second one is when God births you into a new realm of power that is superior than the one that you're being birthed out of. This is heaven's delivery room. Something is about to happen. I feel anointed. I want you to stand to your feet. God is going to help you to change your perspective. how you see yourself in this world, how you treat yourself, what you do with your time, what you do with your mind. For many of you, the faculty of imagination and innovation. You know what I found out, Apostle Giles? It's not about will. It's about willingness. 
Are you willing to go to the next level? When Jesus was praying in the Garden of Eden, when he said, not my will, but thy will be done, the first part of it was, if it's possible, let this cup. I have a will, and I want to do it, but I'm not willing. And he prayed through until he hit this dimension of willingness. Where you're going takes cooperation. Where I'm going takes cooperation. And it takes a recognition that I don't have to be like anyone else. In this season, you're going to be powerful, not because you're the best, but because you're the only. When you're the only, who's your competition? In this season, let others compete with you, but you don't have to compete with anyone. I'm the only. Are you getting this? I'm the only. What you do matters. Who you are matters. You've got dreams. You've got vision. And you've got enough power to bring it to pass because of the mental that is on your life. It's a mental that's on the church. And you are the church. And when you walk out, you're going to dream again. You're going to believe again. You're going to show up so differently. You're going to be unstoppable. What are you intending to do when you leave? What do you intend to create? What do you intend to write, to build, to own? Where do you intend to send your children? Where do you, I intend to do it. You get in my way, I'm gonna run you over. Why? Because I'm unstoppable. I see something for you something that you saw for yourself and is amazing. You're going to travel all over the world and you're going to fill up stadiums. It is God's will. Nobody knows what you sacrificed for this. Nobody knows, but God does. Before we release these mentals, there are 50 of you that are gonna give a thousand dollar seed, 50. Those of you that know about the thousand dollar seed, it's fantastic. Solomon became powerful because of a thousand dollar seed. When he gave those thousand sheep, God said to him, you're gonna be the wealthiest, you're gonna be the greatest, you're gonna be favored. I don't have time to teach it, but it was a thousand dollar seed that broke the spirit of poverty off, off of me. Not a degree. It was that thousand dollar seed. Your worries are over. The bills are paid. The 50 people, you're going to walk out of your seat. And you're going to give because you want to. And we're going to anoint you. You're, you're, you're now officially a kingdom underwriter. You're going to always be insulted. Because you're going to say, is that all they want? Please come. Man of God. It's an honor for me to undergird you. It's an honor. Don't you worry about a thing. This is my assignment. It's my assignment. I don't pray for money. I just give seed. I gave a complete stranger a thousand dollars. You happy girl? That's how I roll. 
I don't even feel it. That was my chewing gum money. Everybody up here say, I don't feel this. Please come, please come, come forward. Those of you that have old fashioned checks, you're writing the check too. Pardon? Joshua Giles Ministry. This is a young black man doing something. The only thing I'm requesting from you is you have, you have integrity, maintain integrity, maintain in, in accountability, and don't fleece and play games with the flock. Feed them. That's what we need in our community. We don't need any more games. And live what you preach. No scandals. None whatsoever. If you have a challenge, you call me. We'll get you through. Come over, come over. Prophetess Cynthia, good to see you. You got a lot of anointings. Come straight over so everybody could come. Come straight over. I never have to think about myself. You, think, you learn the art of thinking about others. Hey there. I'm going to challenge you. You're going to give this $1,000. You walk away. Some of you might have that feeling in your belly. You know that feeling like, why in heaven's name did I do this? But I want you to take one step further. I want you to ask God, God, what feel? am I going to prosper in? Is it real estate? Is it IT? Is it medicine? What field will I prosper? Secondly, you're going to ask God, give me an idea. And then thirdly, you're going to say to God, the seed that I have, whatever you got left over in your bank account, that's going to be the seed you're going to use to develop that idea, whatever that idea is. I see real estate. I see a portfolio of real estate for many of you that's here. Real estate is your, you're, you're going to have several homes. You're going to have a vacation home that you're not going to rent. You're going to have your own mansion that you live in. Then I see apartment buildings, apartment complexes that you're going to own. Come closer, come closer, come down. You're giving this because you want to. Can you get a mic and tell them how to give? Because there's a lot of people. It's up there? Okay. This is where you guys are going to give, right? You're going to give there. It would have been good if you have a QR code. Next time, get your, get your people, just do a QR code and they can take a picture and there you go. Everyone that's here, there are about, I wanna say 50 women that I should be mentoring. My days of trying to succeed are over. I've had, I'm successful. And there are 50 women that I need to mentor. And I'm going to do it and give you trade secrets. You're going to do some great things. Is there any way we can get their information, Apostle? Okay. And we're, we're, we're going to help you to get from point A to point B. Amen? All right, put your um, phones, whatever you're giving. Praise God for those that are using checks. Amen. Ain't nothing like a good check, honey. Amen. Let's pray over this. Now, Father, we thank you. Before we even receive, let the mantle of Joseph fall upon each one of the givers, those that are in the pew. 
those that are standing here, those that cannot give, wants to give, those that have intentions, they have a heart, they're in the pew, they could not come up here. I decree and declare that you are now economic engineers and financial gurus. I pray this over each one of us, not just those that are given $1,000, over each of us that are in this place. Now, Father, as we give this seed, we are opening our mind and our heart and our spirit to receive prophetic downloads. You're gonna give us instructions. You're gonna tell us what to do on a daily basis. We're gonna go into our quiet place, our secret place, and we're gonna hear from you. And Father, we're not gonna uh, judge the words that you're giving. For there will be a manifestation for some this year. For others, it will take two or three years. My first idea took me three years before I got it to market and four years before I saw the ROI, but I'm still benefiting from it today. I pray over your finances. I pray over your bank accounts. I decree and declare your bank accounts are being filled. I pray over your investments. I pray over the property that you own, be it a ministry or a church or your home or your house. I decree and declare that you live in a mortgage-free house. I decree that now this is the beginning of a portfolio of wealth for you. I pray over each one of you that are renters, you will be homeowners. And I decree that you will live in houses that you have never built and they will be the home of your dreams. Someone else built it, but you're going to live in it. I decree and declare in this new normal, you will have factories, you will have uh, publishing companies, you will have businesses, you will have IT companies, you will own banks, you will own investment companies. I decree you will be the first in your neighborhood to be uber wealthy. I decree mentals are falling now. I decree the mental of Joseph, the mental of Joshua. I decree the mental of Esther. I decree the mental of Jacob that you will plant in economic hardship and hard times, but you will prosper. I decree mentals are falling. The mental of Paul, the mental of John, the mental of, of, of Ruth, the mental of Naomi. I decree mental mentals are falling. I decree the mental, hallelujah, of Abraham is falling upon you. The mental of Sarah, that your days of non-productivity are over. I call you blessed. I decree that people that you admire, that those mentals are falling upon you. I break the spirit of stagnation. I decree and declare now, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. I liberate your mind. I liberate your, st your, your spirit. I decree that your dreams and your vision is being taken off of life support. I decree helpers are coming. I decree your churches are are increasing in numbers your ministry are is increasing I call you blessed I call you anointed I call you successful I call you respected I call you highly esteemed I call you highly favored I bless each one of you things will be different for you I decree that you are a giver I decree that you are now building wealth that future generations will not be able to span. I bless you now with success. I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I decree breakthrough right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless each one of you as you give. Pastor Giles is going to come back. I hope you were blessed with his word. Amen. Go home. Change your pers perspective. Change the way you see yourself. Change how you think about yourself. And change what you do with your time. When you go home, take television out of your bedroom. Take all technology from your bedroom and dream again in Jesus' name. You may take your seat. I want you to do me one favor as I hand this mic back over.
one favor. You may take your seat. You want to give, everyone give. If you're giving, amen, please give. If you could take out your phone, usually we go to the back of the room and you buy books. But if you could take out your phone, if you have Amazon, this is the back of the room. There are three books that I want you to purchase. One, Hello Tomorrow. That has the 12 areas you write a vision in your life. Chapter number eight. We'll outline it for you. Number two, Goodbye Yesterday. And then number three, Unstoppable. Unstoppable. And then the last thing, we're doing our first school of ministry live again in Atlanta, Georgia. And I'd love for each one of you to show up. It's kingdomu.net, kingdomu.net. Please write it down. And if you go on the website, there's a free download of a book I wrote for how to navigate the new normal. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be with you. I love you guys. I wish I could take all of you home with me. But God bless you. In the future, I would love this channel to be an over-the-top platform, getting a play button, of course, and reaching a wider audience. And my aim is to point people back to God because tomorrow is not promised to anyone. We are in the last and evil days. Let's keep our ears open. In conclusion, I need your help. Your seed is important whether you're new to this channel or not. Liking the next video that I upload on any platform underneath Catch My Praise. Giving credit to where you get your sources also helps. Your generous gifts of any amount are welcome. Catch up is always open under Catch My Praise. Why am I doing this? Because it takes a lot to do a lot. Thank you for listening. Until then, believe it, reach it, catch it, here only on the Catch My Praise Network.